All right, let's go ahead and take a look at page three here. All right, so we've got Anthony and Sissy. They're participating in this Rollerama uh, roller skating dance championship. Sounds like a blast. So while 55 kilogram Anthony roller skates backwards, that's going to matter later, um, Sissy jumps into his arms and has a certain velocity in the same direction. So same direction also matters. So what do we have going on here? I've got two people to begin with. There is Anthony. Um, along with Sissy. And then we end up with, in the end, Sissy is being held on to by Anthony. Look at those fantastic drawings. Um, so that's exactly what it looks like if Anthony were to hold on to Sissy. All right, so um, what we have then is momentum of one person momenta of another person and then to end with we have the momenta of two people together uh, we would look at these two people as basically the same object they're they're traveling together all right so what exactly is this m then hopefully you realize that it's the mass of both these people combined and of course combined would just be addition so another way of writing this instead of mv plus mv equals mv we could split this this mass out into mass one and mass two added together times velocity so that's what i have going on up here um, if you don't want to show it as m1 plus m2 i'm fine with it if if you were to leave both those m's off and just call it m and no okay off to the side or in your head you're going to have to take this mass and this mass and you'd plug it in for the total mass over here um, if that made no sense, then as you're as you're going, just plug your plug your mass directly into the inelastic um, momentum equation. But hopefully, it hopefully it makes sense intuitively, where you don't need to necessarily know these formulas. You can come up with them as the scenarios are happening, because we know a law of conservation of momentum says however much total momentum I have here, and total would just be adding however many momenta I have equals the total amount of momentum that I have to to end with. Um, in this case, only one object that has gained mass because one person has caught the other. All right, so let's take a look at um, where we're getting these numbers from. So Anthony, we know, is 55 kilograms. That's where I'm getting 55 kilograms from. Um, he's roller skating backwards. So remember, anytime we see backwards, that's representing a negative. So that's where I'm getting this negative from, and it's at 4 meters per second, so that's where I'm getting the 4 from. And then Sissy, we know, is 45 kilograms, so that's where I'm getting these 45 from down here. She's considered mass 2 or object 2, same deal with over here. And then she has a velocity of 6 meters per second, so that's where I'm getting the 6 from over here, and this is her, her velocity before Anthony has caught on to her. And it says in the same direction. Well, his direction is backwards, his direction is negative, so that same direction for her would also be negative then. So that's why I'm getting negative 6 over here, which is, I guess, a little bit hard to see, to be more mindful of that with the next answer keys. Okay, so then it says, how fast does the pole pair, excuse me, roll backwards together? Um, when they're together, their masses have combined, so that's where we're getting this total of, um, of 100 kilograms from, and how fast? We don't know, right? That's that's V. So then at this point, just like the um, the other page like I was talking about, don't look at this as just one long equation. Think of it as all I have to do is worry about 55 times negative 4, and I come up with my sub-answer. All I got to do is worry about 45 times negative 6, come up with my sub-answer. Same deal with over here. 55 plus 45, that's all we've got to worry about is 100 V. All right, so then at that point, um, take a look at your next little sub-step. Um, for me, I said, well, I know that these two numbers are negative 220, these two are negative 270. I'm going to combine my like terms. So negative 270 plus negative 220, or vice versa, is going to give you this negative 490. That's where that's coming from. The other side of things, I don't have anything else to combine. I'm just going to leave it as 100V and then go from there. All right, And then again, don't really worry about do I... Do I divide 100 by 490 or 490 by 100? Look at it as here's V. How do I get V by itself? 
Well, B is currently being multiplied by 100, so do the opposite. So I get those to cancel. If I do it to one side, algebra tells me I have to do it to the other side. And then this might be one of those problems that you want to just do in your head so you keep your, your mind sharp for SAT, especially that non-calculator portion. Um, negative 490 divided by 100 is the same thing as just taking, taking the decimal. In this case, the decimal after 490 would be right there. 490 and 490.0 is the same thing. And move it two decimal places to the left. One, two. So then we'd have 4.9. So that's what I come out with over here. It's 4.9 meters per second. It is negative 490, so it's negative 4.9 meters per second. And we want to see, does this, does this make sense? So the negative represents that they're moving backwards. And that makes sense. The problem is telling me that they're going to be moving backwards together. Even the problem didn't say that. We know that Anthony is traveling backwards. We know that Sissy is traveling backwards. So in the end, it would make no sense that all of a sudden they start traveling forwards. Uh, if they're both traveling backwards, they're going to continue to travel backwards. So the negative makes sense. And then our velocity makes sense as well. And one of them is going negative 4. The other one's going negative 6 meters per second, so when they meet up, they should be somewhere in between. Uh, not exactly in between because their masses are different, but pretty close. And negative 4.9 is really close to being right in between negative 4 and negative 6 meters per second. And then just like any of the other problems, we could take this negative 4.9, plug it back in over here, and see, does this whole side equal this whole side? It looks like it should come out to negative 490 on both sides. If it does, we know we're in good shape, and, and it will. All right. um, problem B is kind of interesting. If they're skating towards each other, how is that going to change anything? Will it change anything? So now think about it this way. If I have two people, and I'll go use my diagram from up here, one's traveling one way, one's traveling the other way, their momenta are going to cancel out a little bit. So it would make sense that their their velocity overall is going to be decreased. Now, which way will they continue to travel? Well, it says that to begin with, Anthony's skating towards Sissy. So all I've done is the same exact problem, except I've changed the sign. Because Anthony is now, in this problem, traveling this direction. Whereas before he was traveling to the left. So now I've just changed it to positive. My mass for Anthony is no different. My mass for Sissy is no different. Combined mass is no different. Um, and all my other velocities stay the same. So I do the exact same problem. The only difference is, again, I, I get rid of the negative for my velocity because now they're skating towards each other. And it should make sense that if they're skating towards each other, when they slam into each other, they're actually going to decrease the total amount of momentum because they're going to lose some energy when they do that. So I end up with B equal to negative 0.5 meters per second. Does the negative make sense? Well, let's take a look at our, our masses. We have Anthony. We have Sissy. If their velocities were the same, it would actually make more sense that we should be going in the direction of Anthony because he's more massive. But We've got to take into account that it's not only about mass. Sissy's traveling pretty fast, negative 6 as compared to 4. Uh, so she's going to end up slamming into Anthony quite quickly, so she may end up uh, making him actually move backwards. So we're not, really, we're not really sure at this point. So it could be that they are traveling in Sissy's direction or Anthony's direction. It's kind of hard to estimate. But if we look at this number, negative 0.5, that shows, well, yeah, it's kind of it's hard to estimate. It's somewhere like right in between. It's, it's almost, almost zero. So we wouldn't really know, is it, is it in the positive direction or the negative direction until we actually took this number, plugged it back in. I'll plug it back in right there. And if I come out with both sides equal one another, I know that I'm in pretty good shape. And again, it doesn't have to be spot on. But uh, we should be we should be close. All right, let's take a look at number five. I'm going to go through this one a little bit quicker. It's an elastic collision. We've done a whole bunch of those already um, in the previous couple of videos. Um, Todd's rolling this seven kilogram bowling ball, so that's where I'm getting these sevens from. 
down the alley for the league championship one pin is still standing if it's just standing there it's at rest it's it's zero so that's where i'm getting this zero from Todd hits it head-on with a velocity of 9 meters per second. So the ball is going 9 meters per second when it hits the pin. So the ball is at 9 meters per second. It makes sense that it's positive because it's going in the forwards direction. And it says the pin is 2 kilograms. So that makes sense that our pin doesn't change its mass at all from before it's hit to after it's struck. Um, and then it says it acquires a forward velocity of 14 meters per second. So we've got to um, worry about which what is acquiring that uh, that velocity. What the heck does acquire even mean? So it's getting a velocity of 14 meters per second. It says it's the pin that is doing it. So the pin is acquiring the forward velocity. So that's where this 14 is coming from. Then the forward direction. So it would be positive, and it is the pin that is picking up speed. So then think about, even before we do the problem, what should V for the ball be? So I've got a ball that's going 9 meters per second. It hits something that's at rest. So it should make sense that the ball slows down. So to begin with, the ball's velocity is 9 meters per second. So it makes sense that whatever I get for V is less than 9 meters per second. And I'm really, really, really hoping that you're thinking that way as you're going through some of these problems. There's no way I can really test that. Um, you wouldn't have a, a quiz on are you thinking that way by any means, but it's something that's really, really, really important. I can't stress it enough for just getting better number sense in general. It's way more important than the physics of momentum. It's more important than the SAT. Uh, it's just really important to have a strong strong sense of numbers, uh, strong, strong number sense, and can I actually take something that I know from a class and apply it to you know, things that I've seen in the real world. So sort of like common sense tells me, yes, the ball's going to slow down, but what is does my math actually support what may be in, intuitive for some of us and may not may not be intuitive for others. But um, So it makes sense that we're going slower than we were initially. All right. So again, just do all your math problems separately here. Combine like terms if you can. Um, get rid of anything that's not by your variable. So in this case, 28, subtract it from both sides. Um, and then from there, we're left with 35 equals 7z, 7v, excuse me. It's late. Um, but we're going to get v by itself. How do we do that? Well, it's currently being multiplied by 7, so divide by 7. Do it to one side, do it to the other, and we're left with 5 meters per second. 5 meters per second makes sense the ball would still be going in the forward direction. It's not like the pin is so massive that it's going to knock the ball backwards. That wouldn't make any sense if we came out with a negative. Um, just from seeing people bowl or bowling ourselves, we know that the ball continues forward, so the positive makes sense. And it would make sense that if a ball ended up hitting a stationary object, that it would lose a little bit of speed. And we did. We went from 9 down to 5. And of course, just like any other problems, take that 5, plug it back in and make sure that both sides equal one another or at least are very close. In this case we didn't round so both sides should equal each other exactly. If we round then we know that we can be off by a little bit. Alright so finally uh, we're going to take another look at a uh, football, football problem and uh, we know that somebody is running at 2 meters per second that somebody is Cutler, who's 45 kilograms. So that's where my first couple numbers are coming from. We know Cutler is 45 kilograms. We know they're running at, he's running at 2 meters per second. He collides with J.J. Watt, who is 90 kilograms, and he's traveling at 7 meters per second in the other direction. So J.J. has a mass of 90 before and after the collision, but the key part is he's traveling in the other direction. So that's why we've got a negative 7 here, not just straight up 7 from the velocity, but it's velocity in the opposite direction from Cutler. All right, um, and then it does tell us that Cutler is knocked backwards. So if Cutler is, to begin with, going in this direction, it would make sense that he's going in the opposite direction afterwards, since it does tell us, the problem does tell us that he is being knocked backwards. All right, so we don't have to do anything with the sign for that quite yet. It's just sort of a check step to see do we come out with a negative because then it would make sense in relation to the problem. All right, 
We've done a whole bunch of problems like this already, so I won't go over it um, in, in nearly as much depth. But again, like any of the other problems, just take one step at a time, do your solving, go through, combine your like terms, so 90 and negative 630, you get negative 540. Over here, there's no like terms. Start isolating for your variable. So we're going to get rid of 90, not touch anything that's associated with V quite yet. If we do it to one side, we got to do it to the other. And then we end up with V that's almost by itself. It's currently being multiplied by 45. So we've got to do the opposite. Do it to one side, do it to the other. So I end up with negative 10 meters per second. Does that negative make sense? It does because it says that Cutler's being knocked backwards. So knocked backwards would make sense that our final answer is negative. And then like anything, go ahead and plug that number in um, to your, your formula right there. Give it a shot to make sure both sides equal one another. And if they do, we know we're in good shape. We're not rounding in this case, so we should come out with exactly the same number on both sides.